What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over a somewhat AFK Ripper Demon method that is 100% Revo. Uh, all you have to do is get the method set up correctly and then if you're using the binding contracts you're going to have to manually be noting them but uh, other than that it is mostly AFK and this method is incredibly fast kills per hour. All right, so to go over the preset, uh, you can see the relics that we are using are just Death Note, Berserker's Fury, and Fury of the Small. Uh, the only relic that you actually need, though, is going to be Fury of the Small. Uh, the other ones are just there to help out, uh, but I will say Berserker's Fury is really, really decent if you're using a tier 90 weapon, uh, which I'll get into. Uh, for the familiar, we're using a Hellhound with the Prism, uh, and that's just to maintain the Hellhound because it will die if you don't use the Prism, so definitely be bringing the Prism with you. For the gear, you can see we have two pieces of Crypt Bloom, uh, and that is very specifically the gloves and boots. Uh, you can't use any different pieces of Crypt Bloom. Uh, if you guys don't know, because I get a few comments about it, uh, when you use off style gear and armor with like any style nowadays, it's based on the armor value of that uh, piece of armor. So for example, if you were to use a leg, like a Crypt Bloom leg instead of the gloves, you would have a much more significant accuracy penalty than if you used the gloves. And that's why we use the boots and gloves. Uh, if you use the legs, helmet, or body, you will have just a massive accuracy penalty, and uh, it's just not worth it. So definitely be using the two pieces of Crypt Bloom, the boots and gloves, uh, just to be getting that effect, as well as a little bit of Animate Dead. Uh, for the ring, we use a Ring of Death. Uh, this ring is really good for this method. Uh, we You use it just in case you screw up at the start, I guess, but you also use this for the passive effect. Uh, if you guys don't know, when you kill a monster with the Ring of Death, you have a chance to gain 5% adrenaline, and we really want to be farming as much adrenaline with this ring as possible because uh, it helps you just spam the scythe ability like a madman. For the armor, we are using... You could be using three pieces of Death Warden, but... Uh, it's hard to tell, but I'm using two pieces of Death Warden and one piece of Death Dealer. And uh, the only reason I have it set up like that is because uh, I didn't really want to switch around any perks or anything like that. These uh, these pieces of armor just had the correct perks on them. Uh, basically, I just had Enhanced Devoted for on the Death Dealer legs instead of on my Death Warden. So I use those instead, and it seems to work perfectly fine. Uh, we also use these for the HP boost because it does help you out when starting up. For the weapons, uh, you can see I have a tier 90 main hand and a tier 95 offhand. Um, this is definitely the uh, minimum that you should be using here. Obviously, a tier 95 main hand is better, but the reason I'm using this tier 90 is, and that's just to be getting the Eruptive 4 Ruthless 3 combo perk. Uh, you really want to be using that. I tried this with the standard best in slot perks on a tier 95 main hand, and it didn't work. It worked like 99% of the time, but very rarely. It seemed like a demon was able to sneak past and get its insta kill out if you just like hit really bad or something. So it does seem like the Eruptive 4 Ruthless 3 perk is required, but you can just put it on a tier 90 uh, main hand instead of like destroying the perks or ruining the perks on your tier 95. So uh, definitely be using a tier 90 if that is the case for you. Uh, the tier 95 offhand seems like super good for this method though, because you want to be able to hold up to five uh, soul stacks just to spam out strike five times and just rush everything in your path. Uh, the cape, uh, it can really just be any cape, to be honest. We're not using death skulls, so, uh, you know, whatever cape is fine, probably, as long as it has a necromancy bonus. Uh, for the amulet, you can see we are using a blood amulet of fury. This amulet is incredibly good for this method, uh, and that's because if you look in the inventory, we are using that green powder. That is the Powder of Protection, which gives us the 10% damage reduction to our overhead prayer. Um, and that is basically the same thing as the Amulet of Souls effect, but it doesn't stack with it. So we're actually able to get the effect of the Blood Amulet for healing and damage, as well as that 10% 10, uh, 10 damage reduction from the Powder. So that's really, really good. Uh, and then we just have a Scripture of when for the AoE damage and Poison Spam. Uh, for the inventory, to start out at the top right, you can see we have some incense sticks. Uh, it's just Quirm and Lantadime sticks. Uh, and then we also have Powder of Penance, as well as that Powder of Protection I was talking about, uh, to upkeep our prayer and damage reduction. 
And then you can also see there is a uh, extra Hellhound pouch in there. Uh, that can be really nice to bring if you're not very good at keeping the prism up. And then at the bottom of the inventory, you can see we just have a spring cleaner, the gem bag, um, you know, some Excalibur and shard, and then some cannonballs, and then the extra rune pouch for animate dead, as well as the prism. And then we just have, you know, overloads, potion reservoirs, and weapon poison. And then next to that, we have some magic note paper, which is to note the binding contracts, as well as the weapon poisons if you want to. So as for the perks on this gear, you can see right here is going to be my perks. So to start out with the weapon, like I said, we want to use Eruptive for Ruthless 3 on our main hand, or I guess you could have it on your offhand, but uh, this seems really, really important for this method. I tried this with a tier 95 weapon that uh, just had the standard perks, like I said, and it did not work 100% of the time, but it seemed like with the just Death Guard and the Ruthless 3 Eruptive 4 perk, it did work 100% of the time. So you definitely want to be getting this perk. Uh, for the offhand perk, it's just your standard best in slot perk here. Uh, after, Aftershock 4 really is all you need. Uh, and then for the Death Warden top, you can see we have Biting and Crackling, which are both really good for this. Obviously, uh, Crackling Relentless is better, but um, I didn't really want to swap the perks on my Death Warden top because uh, I have this for the Raziel method that I showed. But as you can see with Crackling, I did use the Demon Slayer perk. This is really, really uh, important for this method. Uh, it's much like the Eruptive Ruthless combo. Um, the Demon Slayer perk just boosts your damage just high enough, uh, especially with the tier 90 weapon. Uh, it boosts it just high enough to uh, get over that threshold where you never die. Uh, and then on the legs, uh, Absorptive 4 seems really good. I would probably use this if you're using uh, the Death Dealer set or legs, I guess. But the important perk is going to be Enhanced Devoted 4. You really are going to need the ED4 perk because you do need to be getting that little bit of extra damage reduction. As for the aura we are using, uh, I think the Inspiration Aura is the only one that I found to really consistently work like really nicely. Uh, there may be other auras that do work, like you might be able to get away with Penance. But again, I have found the inspiration helps so much that it's probably the only aura worth using. And the reason for that is because yeah, it basically just lets you farm out a ton of scythe casts where you otherwise maybe wouldn't be getting quite as many. Uh, like I said, you maybe could get away with other perks, but the inspiration one just seems incredibly strong for this method. All right, guys, so now I am going to be going over the uh, Ripper Demon method. But before I get into that, there are a couple things that I want to uh, note here. Uh, and the first is going to be uh, I would only suggest this method for people that really want to be getting the pet uh, quickly, I guess, or are mass farming the uh, binding contracts for Ripper Demons. Because uh, honestly, setting up this method is going to be pretty annoying, I think, for most people. It's really technical and tedious. And if you screw it up at all, uh, you'll just die, um, which is why we have the Ring of Death on. But uh, anyway, so for this method, uh, before you get into the wilderness, I really like to make sure you have all of your buffs active just in Wars Retreat here. Um, and what we're using is going to be the Powder of Penance, Powder of Protection, uh, some Incense Sticks. I'm using Lantadime and Quorum. You can also use Felstock to improve the rate for Elites. Um, and then we also are going to be summoning a Hellhound. I already have one here, though. So, and then once you do that, I like to deposit all of these items uh, that you don't need. And then um, we teleport out to the wilderness. So now we are going to be teleporting out to the wilderness. So there are uh, two ways to get here. Uh, I guess three ways to get here. But uh, the first way is going to be using the wilderness herb patch right here. And then you walk north and then go east. And you can see uh, next to the demonic runes or red dragon isle, like in between these is these little uh, yellow spots on the map. And this is where the Ripper Demons are located. So uh, you can teleport, uh, you know, from the Wilderness Sword. Or you could teleport from the Lodestone down here and then walk all the way up. It takes a long time to do that, though. And then the last way is going to be from Dragonkin Laboratory. And then you can walk west. And I'll show that here in a second. Um, so this account on uh, right here on the screen does not have a Wilderness Sword. So uh, I have been using the Dragonkin Lab method. And there are a few things that um, are seem kind of important when setting it up, especially with this method, because we're running in from the east side. Um, the method uh, is a little bit more specific to get there. You have to like go all the way around. 
and that's because I found if you walk just straight over, uh, you can end up luring like some uh, some of these demons, or the Calgarian demons over there actually, uh, and it's just really annoying. You don't really want to be doing that. Um, so yeah, obviously kind of uh, try to avoid that. Uh, and the reason you don't want to lure the demons is because they can get stuck like in the Ripper Demon pile and then you have to like deal with the Calgarian Demon. It can pull you. It's just really annoying. So what I find works the best is if you come down here by the Ghostly Piper like music guy, you can see we're right next to the Ripper Demons and it does make it a lot easier to uh, get this set up. So uh, before you start attacking the demons and getting this all set up, you are going to want to turn on all of your buffs. So uh, obviously have your powders set up, have your scripture of when active, have your animate dead on. We use sorrow as well as protection from melee prayers. Uh, make sure you have your overload up, make sure you have your weapon poison up. Uh, apparently I do not have a weapon poison. Uh, so we'll see how this works without that. Uh, unlucky. And then you also want to be activating your inspiration aura here. So we activate the inspiration aura, get right into this. So um, when I set up my cannon, uh, I'm going to be running back and forth like this. And when I'm running back and forth like this, the reason I'm doing that is because it'll get the Ripper Demons to unstack and start like attacking me. And you can see each individual demon's adrenaline bar. And it allows you to focus on the demons that have high adrenaline uh, and focus them down and kill them to get them to reset and have uh, zero adrenaline when they respawn. And uh, the reason we want to do that is because if a demon is like sitting here pre, um, you know, stacked up with whatever you call it, the stacks or whatever, if its adrenaline bar is like pre-filled a little bit, it could potentially uh, use its special attack and insta-kill you, which uh, obviously we do not want to happen. So yeah, let's start this up, get my prayer on. What we're going to do here is you can see there is this uh, big circle and then the little circle to the north. We are going to put our cannon just northwest of this little circle and uh then we're gonna do that thing where i run back and forth and we're gonna stand uh right north of this circle here all the way to the south so this is what that looks like uh i like to precast my ghost here use devotion pre-use the ghost ability and then we get in position to drop the cannon down so we drop the cannon right here we start up the cannon and then i like to use threads of fate soul sap and then a volley of souls. Uh, and just to get a ton of damage out on these Ripper Demons, you can see this one here has a high adrenaline bar. So we're going to kill that one. And then we're going to move into the position. And as you can see, the Ripper Demons that are left don't really have any adrenaline. So uh, now we're going to be able to hopefully kill them. Hopefully like one of these guys doesn't have a million adrenaline or something. Um, yeah, should be good. So yeah, now we should be able to sit here and uh, pretty much fully AFK. Um, this gets you about 1,500 kills per hour, which is insanely good money. It's, uh, if you're making binding contracts and you're being perfect with not losing any, it could be up to 130 million GP per hour, um, which is ridiculous for this method. It's really good. Uh, but you also have to take into account that you're wasting a lot of time making the binding contracts. Um, it's a gross of like 220 mil per hour, but because the binding ca uh, contracts cost so much to make, you end up profiting about 120 mil per hour or so with the binding contracts, maybe even a little bit more than that, uh, about 100 and maybe like 30 mil per hour in binding contracts. So um, yeah, definitely really good uh, to be doing binding contracts here. Uh, and then as for the Slayer XP per hour, it does come out to about 4 million Slayer XP per hour, but I mean, you know, you're only going to be getting tasks of about 50 to 100. So, you know, that's not super feasible. Um, and then I guess one thing to note here is you can see the Hellhound is dying. So when the Hellhound does get low, we drop out of Prism. Uh, really important to do so your Hellhound doesn't die. You can actually bring extra Hellhound pouches just in case. I would probably recommend that. But um, yeah, and then for the combat XP an hour, it's about two and a half million combat XP per hour. It's pretty insane, to be honest. Like this method is actually ridiculous. But um, it is annoying to get set up if you like when you're learning, you're definitely going to like probably die, to be honest. It's going to be really annoying when you start setting this up for the first time and you're sitting there like, oh, my God, the Ripper Demons are like they're always full adrenaline and killing me uh, because like if someone comes here or you came here and tell you out, you, uh, Rippers will be pre stacked up uh, and have their special attack. And uh, yeah, it could definitely be pretty annoying.
So uh, one thing to note about looting here is you can see how there's all this garbage on the ground and uh, I don't have my looting interface open. So one thing to note about looting here is you can see I have my looting interface open. Um, when you're looting, make sure you, you use the loot custom feature here um, and make sure you're turning off the auto collecting of the sharks with loot custom. And basically what ends up happening here is when your inventory is completely filled up, um, your character actually kind of stalls out when you start looting. And if you sit there and loot with a full inventory, like let's say your inventory is filled with binding contracts, you will sit there and get stalled out. It seems like what ends up happening is because your inventory is completely full and you tried to loot on top of having a full inventory, your character like gets stuck for a tick. Uh, and when you get stuck for a tick, if you do that too many times, or you know you get really bad hits, I guess, uh, what can end up happening is the Ripper Demon's bar will fill all the way up and then insta-kill you. So, especially if you're going to be making binding contracts, be very careful with uh, how you're looting and make sure you're like using the note paper on the contract, looting, custom, and then you know making sure your inventory doesn't get filled up and get stalled out for that one tick. So, with the prism here, uh, the final note is going to be Try to time the prism when you cast an ability. Uh, from what I've noticed, when you use the prism uh, and it's like in between an ability cast, it will reset your GCD. So let's say you, like the GCD is three ticks. So let's say you use an ability, wait two ticks, cast the prism. You will have to wait maybe another tick after that. And that one tick can be the difference maker between the Ripper Demon getting full adrenaline and not getting full adrenaline as you can see like sometimes they do i guess get a little close especially if you're not in a scythe rotation so uh yeah definitely be careful with uh dropping your prisms you can see here ability comes out and then ability comes out and we drop the prism at the same time as you can see i don't know how easy that was to see but we did drop the prism at the exact same time as casting our scythe ability so it was completely lossless and then uh again uh, when you're looting, make sure you're looting all when um, there's not like uh, sharks or whatever on the floor and you're not like filling your inventory up completely and you're not, and you know, you obviously like just noted your um, your binding contracts if you're using those. And uh, yeah, this method, absolutely ridiculous. It's crazy how this works and that it works. Um, this is only really doable with necromancy and I think what you see is pretty much the minimum gear you could get away with. I wouldn't really use anything lower than this. All right, guys, so now for anybody who really didn't like the previous method that I showed, I'm gonna be showing you a method to be killing one singular little ripper demon right here in the player owned dungeon with an aggro pot. Uh, unfortunately, to do this method, I would highly suggest having the ripper demon in here alone um, because uh, if you have other stuff in here, it will auto-retaliate to those targets and potentially slow down your kills per hour here. So yeah, I would highly suggest just uh, getting a single ripper in here alone. But uh, for this method, we are just going to be, you know, activating our scripture of one using uh, Animate Dead and then using Sorrow as well as Prey Melee. Uh, you can see the gear we are using right here. It's just going to be the Demon Horn Necklace, two pieces of Crypt Bloom. Uh, I use two pieces of the first Necromancer Robe and then the Death Dealer Legs. Uh, but that's mainly just to be getting the uh, two-piece set effect from uh, first necromancer and then i just have enhanced devoted on my legs uh standard weapon perks as well um you could use the vampirism aura it's probably the best in slot here but any aura should work fine um <clears throat> and then yeah we're just using holy egg or overloads as well as weapon poison and then uh that's pretty much it so we just afk out in here so with this method, you will probably be getting anywhere from about 160 to maybe 175 kills per hour. So it's definitely uh, not the fastest method in the world, especially if you're going to be going for a massive amount of uh, kills for the pet. Um, but if you just want to AFK as much as possible, like you have a bunch of time to AFK, this uh, is definitely a pretty solid method if you don't want to set up the previous thing, like I said. Uh, if you are getting 175 kills per hour, this should get you about 500k Slayer XP per hour, about 15 mil GP per hour, and about 300k Necromancy XP per hour. So the XP is somewhat decent. It's definitely not the best in the world, but it's also not the worst either. Um, so yeah, this is for anybody who just likes AFKing a bunch, and uh, hopefully some people use this method if they really didn't like the other method they saw.
Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully some of you guys use this method and hopefully this video helps some of you guys understand how to set this method up better because uh, it definitely takes a little bit of practice to get this method working but once you get it working it seems to be super super good. So yeah thanks for watching guys if you made it this far in the video definitely drop a like on it and as always guys I will see you in the next one.